Hi, I'm Kathleen Krug from MassageConnection.net and KathleenKrug.com. I'm going to show you a quick five minute neck and back chair massage and I'm going to go through some of the steps as we go through it. Okay, I've got some Brian here and he's going to be our victim of the day. So why don't you have a seat, you're going to straddle and put your knees up here and go ahead and put your face rest there. As soon as you have your face rest here, you have the client position, they're comfortable. You comfortable? Yep. Okay. He's at a good height. We're going to get started. I like to start at the shoulders because it seems to be a major problem for most of us with all our computer work bending down for um, either at the desk, working with kids, teachers, moms, dads, and also a lot of factory work. You get a lot of neck and back issues. So usually our traps are pretty tight. So we start with the palms of our hands on the traps. You don't want to go right on the spine. We're on either side of the spine and over across the traps towards the shoulders. You could just do a few times there. And I like to do some circular motion. And you make sure, Brian, you let me know if the pressure is too hard or if I need to go a little deeper, okay? Right. Now, as I move to his back, I want to keep my hand on his body so he knows where I am. It makes the client feel more comfortable, more secure. And once again, I'm on either side of the spine. I don't want to be putting pressure on the spine. And I'm just doing compressions. I'm in the lunge. And I'm going to go all the way down. This is where his tailbone is here. So I want to go down over there and then back up. And I'm going to keep my hands pretty close together going up the back. I don't want to go like this because then it feels kind of incomplete to them. You want to hit every part of the back and lean into it. See how I'm using my body? I'm not just using my arms and my hands. Then I'm going to make fists, light fists. I'm not going to be ready to punch somebody, but nice and light. And I'm right on his uh, sacrum here, which is the um, triangular <coughs> shaped bone there. And I'm going to do circles. How's that pressure for you, Brian? That's fine. Okay. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this at an event, corporate or otherwise, you want to make sure you have people um, sign a liability waiver and an intake form, which is all in the same thing. And then I'm just using the light fist and moving out kind of turning my wrist. And I'm going to go in circles again. Again, I'm using my body. You want to avoid using only your fingers and your thumbs when you're doing this. Now I'm going to go out. These, this is his uh, pelvis right here. And go out along top of it. And I'm going to go on his bones over here, on his, his thigh bone actually. And then this here again is his sacrum. And you can feel the bone there. Go along the edge there. Does that feel good, Brian? A lot of people have sore hips from their exercising or just sitting all the time or whatever it is. Okay, now I'm going to go down um, to the next, to one of the shoulders. And I'm going to use the meaty part of my forearm. I don't really want to go digging in with my elbow. I'm going to use my fingers to support the front of the muscle. And I'm just going to push the muscle into my fingers. Go across it two, three times. And I'm going to switch direction using the other arm and again the meaty part of the arm and I'm just going to turn it. I'm at a small lunge 
and I'm standing going in the opposite direction of him. I don't want to stand like this because that puts too much pressure on your shoulder and on your QLs. So we're going to go like this, starting at like the base of the neck. I'm just turning my elbow, turning my, fo my whole forearm, and I'm keeping my hand and my fingers relaxed. Okay, we can go in circles. Now you don't have to do all of these. You can incorporate to just do one or do a couple of them. And you'll find many people right through here with their levator and their traps are very, very tight. Some people are like rocks, like a brick wall. You can feel some knots really pronounced. And you can just rest your arm in that area and kind of go back and forth. Again, you see how my hand's hanging, how, my, how it's light, so it's a different feeling to you than like this, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Does it feel better like this as opposed to this? Yeah. Yeah. And it's better for us, too, because it's not as tiring and you're not tightening everything up and you're not going to injure yourself. Okay, now we're going to go around the shoulder blade and you can use the palm of your hand. You can use your fingers, but I prefer not to, especially like days like today where we had six hours of chair massage. Use the palm, or a lot of times I'll just, you know, switch my arm. I'm using this arm, go back to this arm, and once again, little circles, little, um, guess not circles, whatever you would call that. <laughs> it's a technical term. And go up from the shoulder. And you're going over the, the uh, scapula here, are the shoulder blades. So you don't want to go digging your elbow into it because you're going to hurt them. Use the meaty part of your arm. If you're going to go down all the way with your arm, make sure you use some um, proper body mechanics. You don't want to be, you know, bending over and really hurting your back. So you want to either be lunging. If, when you're up here, when you're coming down here, do more of a squat. Or switch from the arm as you're getting too low and use the hand. And then I'm going to keep my hands on him and I'm going to move to the other side. What I like to do typically, I'm sorry, is go back up with both hands. So people want your, both your hands on them as much as possible. They don't want to feel like they're getting ripped off with their massage. Right? Mm. <laughs> okay, we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm using this to support the front of the traps and the forearm to press the trap into my front fingers. I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch my whole body over. And once again, we're going to do this. Go from the base of the neck all the way out. And if you've got five minutes, you might just want to do two sweeps of each. If you're doing 10 or 15 minutes, go ahead and do three. And we're going to turn. I go in circles with it. And he's got more tightness in this shoulder than he does the other shoulder. Okay, he's got a nice little knot right there. Feel that? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you do. And we're going to jiggle it back and forth a little bit and get some blood flow in there. At times I'll just kind of slow down the turn. And the slower you go, the deeper it goes. The faster of movement, the more superficial. The slower, the deeper. And you can, I think this feels pretty good and like a nice little stretch through there, huh, Bry? Yeah. Okay. And again, I'm going to come down the meat of the arm. You can come right over that shoulder blade. And I'm not on the spine. The spine's over here. Um, on the erectors alongside the spine. And then all the way down to the hip bone. And around. I'm going to come back up again. And we're going to work on the neck. Some people like to call this rabbit ears. I guess you can, I don't know. Not sure why they call it that. 
do some little digital kneading there and some digital kneading along the uh, base of the skull, the occiput. Do not go on the inside here, okay? Just stay on the outside part. Now I'm going to pull up along the occiput, the base of the skull, and I'm just going to use my base of my hand to do some compression strokes down. You can use your thumb, but once again, you might want to save that thumb. <laughs> You're doing a lot of people. You've got to worry about your concentrating. Of course, we want everything to feel great for our clients, but we need to be able to do this for how many ever years we want our profession to last. So, okay, a couple more strokes here. on the shoulder, the same stuff I did when we started. And I'm going to go back to the back. Once again, keep your hand on your client so they feel secure, they know where you are, and come down the back. Now you're fine, especially more with the women. They might have shirts on that start riding up on them during the massage a little bit. You don't want to grab under here and be touching their, their back. When they're doing that, just grab the part of the shirt itself and pull it down, okay? Because believe me, they, they, they know their lower back is exposed and they're uncomfortable, so you want to make sure they're as comfortable as possible. So just grab that shirt and pull it down. Okay, I never like to leave my clients just like this because when they sit up, they're a little disoriented and I don't want them standing too fast and falling over. So I, I do hold the cloth here so it doesn't fall, it doesn't stick to their face, and keep my hand on their back. And um, Brian, why don't you sit up for me now? Okay. I'm keeping my hands on him the whole time. Get rid of that. Don't need it anymore. Now we're going to wake you up a little bit because we know typically these guys have to go back to work. So we want them to be alert. We don't want them feeling like they're going to fall asleep all day. So you're going to do quick motions. These are just quick squeezes along the upper traps here. Three times across and move down a little bit. And move down a little bit more. And then along the spine. These are all stimulating moves to get the nervous system up and running and alert again. Before all the work we did was parasympathetic work to calm them down. Now we want to wake them back up. We can do a few squeezes here. And then you can squeeze it and hold it. And all done. We're going to do the clearing just like you do in a relaxation massage. Okay, Brian, you're all set. How are you feeling? Good. 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 All right, and that way they have a couple, they have a minute or so where they're sitting up, they're getting oriented again, they're waking up, and they don't get up off the chair and get dizzy or anything like that. And that helps them wake up for getting a, the day ahead. Also, suggesting that um, they move around a little bit, that they drink some cold water, um, that'll help wake them up, and um, they'll be more alert and because they have more blood flow, more oxygen, more circulation going to the brain. So they actually work better in the afternoon as opposed to falling asleep. And that's our simple neck and back five minute massage. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Kathleen Krug with KathleenKrug.com and MassageConnection.net. Come over and visit us. Have a great day. Thanks.